So here we are, we're ready to get started. And I want to begin with some basic terminology so that you know what you're talking about. And I'm Jackie, and I am here to learn how to write a query. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> there's this, okay, there's this group of people at my work that know how to write queries, and everyone's always like, will you write a query for me? And I just want to be one of those people. And I feel like after today, they will come to me and ask me to write a query. And you will be part of the elite. I will be part of the elite. Wonderful. Okay, I have an embarrassing admission to start with. I don't, I did not know until recently that SQL and SQL were the same thing. They are. I actually get that question a lot. Okay. The question I get is usually like, what do I call it? Because yeah. you hear people call it SQL and you hear people call it SQL. Well, the answer to that is they're both acceptable. Okay. So quick story. Back in the 1970s when all of this got started, it actually was called SQL. So over some time, there was some evolution and some legalities, and the name changed to simply just SQL. So the technical pronunciation is SQL. That's actually what you'll hear me call it. So do you have any idea what SQL might stand for? I feel like the Q is probably query. Mm -hmm, good start. Uh, but the rest of it, I'm not sure. It actually stands for structured query language. Okay. So you were right about the Q. Yeah. <laughs> there are different parts of SQL. You have DML, which is data manipulation language. And then you have DDL, which is data definition language. And then you have DCL, which would be data control language. Okay. Now in this course, we're not going to worry about all of that. We're going to focus on DML, which will allow us to write a select query which is basically just retrieving data from a database. We're not gonna learn how to create the tables and change the properties and insert data and that type of thing. Okay, good. Now there's some more terminology that you're gonna need to be aware of. When you're writing queries, you use clauses or statements. So the first clause or statement is called select. And on this line, what you do is you list the columns that you wanna see in the results. Okay, so like if I want to see my customer name and where they live and maybe the last time they ordered something, those would be the fields in the select yes. clause. That's exactly right. Okay. And you can, I said columns and you said fields are the same thing. So a column is a field. The second clause or statement is the from. And from is where you list the tables or table where those fields are coming from. Then you have the where clause. Where is where you set up the criteria to retrieve a very specific set of data. So it's like a filter. Okay. So if you're looking at your customer name and their city from the customer table, then you would use where to designate which cities specifically you want to look at. Or you could even maybe limit to a certain state. Yes. Okay, cool. Then you have group by. And group by, we'll get into detail on this one later, but it is used when you want to create subtotals in your data. Okay. Having goes along with group by. But having is a lot like where, so it's setting up criteria, but it's only used on the grouped data. And then the last one is order by. What would you think that's used for? I really think I got this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that's to sort the results. Exactly. So these are your statements that you're going to use in a select query. And we're going to go through each one of these in detail. Keep in mind that they have to come in this order if you're going to use them. Uh, okay. The select and from clauses are required, but the other ones are optional. So there's one more thing I want to show you before we get into actually writing queries, and that is the actual database that we're going to use in this course. I just want to familiarize you with the tables and the data that we're going to be using. Okay, this looks familiar. I've seen stuff like this at work as well. So this is like a, a diagram that shows what tables are available to us. That's right. And we're using a really simple database. We're, we've only got four tables. More than likely at work, you're going to have a lot more data than this. But if you'll notice, in my four tables, I've got a list of every field or column that's available for me to use. And I've got these lines drawn between the tables. These are relationships. So if you'll notice, the customer table has the cust num field, and so does the sales table. And so those two fields are alike, so they are related. 
So at some point in this course, we're going to have to learn how to pull data from more than one table, and it's going to be really important to understand how the tables are related. Okay. So the custom tells you which sales in one table are for which customer in another table, kind of. That's right. That's okay. exactly right. Okay. And you can see the rep ID is in the customer table, which is related to the employees table. So I know which employee is assigned to which customer. And if you look at the sales table and the books table, the field they have in common is part num. So in the books table, each book is assigned a part number. And in the sales table, I can tell which part number is being sold or is on that order. Okay, so I'm guessing our data is about selling books? It is, actually. <laughs> we have a fictitious book warehouse. And so imagine we do the publishing and printing, and then we ship it off to different bookstores. Okay, I got you. So we're going to have questions like, how much profit did we get from each customer? Or how much profit did we earn in the first quarter? Things like that. So we'll be able to retrieve the data that we need from these tables, join the tables together, and answer our questions. Okay, I'm excited. Thank you.